Welcome everyone, Tony Martinez here of the CDPE. Today is October 26, 2023. We are almost out of 2023, folks. How many of you are shocked at how quickly this year has gone by, right? Yeah, now you're thinking, oh my God, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, I think a lot of agents used to take like after Thanksgiving off. Now I think a lot of agents take after, uh, I don't know, Halloween off. What do you think? I'm starting to see that pattern. Pretty soon it'll be after Memorial Day and Labor Day. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, listen, today is going to be a special edition of our support line, whatever you want to call this here. I wanted this to be more of a you come to us with what questions, what challenges, what struggles uh, you're encountering. And you know what? We could also make it a different thing, too, is if you are doing something that is working, something that you're seeing results from. What a great opportunity to share it with the rest of the network. Today, I am joined by the one and only Heather J. Keller, who some of you are already very familiar with, but a lot of you are going to maybe see her for the first time. And I'm going to get to a really nice introduction of uh, Heather in a second. But I wanted to start it off this way, mm -hmm. folks. As we get closer to the holidays, something that traditionally happens in the distressed property market is you're going to see a tremendous reduction in the amount of auctions and sale dates. And that is because, believe it or not, some lenders and some judges have a heart. And you start, you, there's always like this unofficial moratorium that happens around mid-December. So you may see that happening. In fact, if you go into your county courthouse uh, site, you look up the foreclosure calendars, you might see that as you get further and further to the end of the year, those numbers start to taper off. Now, it can give those homeowners a false sense of security that maybe they have a lot more time than they usually have. What we have found is that right after the first of the years, the lender gets aggressive again, and they get on the calendar very, very quickly. So it does give you an opportunity since a lot of agents are not going to be engaged in their business during that time for you to start ramping up your marketing and reaching out to people. I think we're all sensitive to the fact that maybe we don't want to have this conversation with people right as the holiday <laughs> is approaching, but I believe that there are ways that can be done in a very professional, empathetic way that doesn't make us look like we're just after the money. And that's always important for us. Some things that I think we also need to do as we come to the end of the year is already be planning for Q1 of next year. We find that a lot of agents don't do that. You know, it's kind of like you have the deals that you're doing right now and then you close them and then you go, oh, now what am I going to be doing? You still have time to close some deals in this year. You know, like with my group in my offices, you know, we're trying to get them. Hey, listen, you know, we can still get some, you know, production before the end of the year. But you are going to reach a point that what you're doing is you are preparing to have an awesome Q1 or a terrible Q1. And the pattern traditionally is a lot of agents get off to a very, very slow start in the first quarter of each year. And the answer is simple they really stopped working towards the end of the year. I don't think we have that luxury now. I think the industry and the business is getting so difficult and so challenging that we really need to step up our game and get out there and work not just harder, but smarter. Have you, A, submitted your information for the find a CDPE, CDP, the ref CDP referral? network. If you haven't done so, you do that through the dashboard. Now, if you ask, what's the dashboard? Oh, vey, that's another conversation. By now, you should all know what the dashboard is, right? So the other thing that I find a lot of agents haven't done CDPEs is join our private Facebook group. You really do need to do that because there's a lot of great information that is exchanged there. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be notified immediately 
when new videos are added so that you're constantly being fed this content. And what Jeanette is doing so nicely and so efficiently, she's putting these links in the uh, chat area. I wanna do a brief commercial and mention for the conference that we have coming up next February. It's called Riches in Niches. And this is an idea I got a few months ago because the industry is, is, is full of conferences. And what I find a lot of them are B12 shots. You know, you go to the conference and either it's a recruiting conference and all they're really there to do is to try to get you to join their company or it's a bunch of you rah, 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 and, you, and you're all pumped up. And then, you know, two days later, three days later, you're back to your old routines. And because I am such a believer that what our industry needs right now are more specialists. See, we have 1.3, 1.4 million general practitioners in the industry. We don't need any more general practitioners. We need specialists. Specialists earn more than general practitioners. And the specialty comes from working certain niches. And that's where the riches and niches came from because I also own other designations. I also partner with other designation owners. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if you could go to one conference and come out with access to four designations that you can earn over a, the year? And I started fleshing this idea out. And then I think I came up with a really good strategy and that is to make it live but make it virtual. And this way, everyone has access to it. So that's what we're doing February 6th through the 9th of next year. It's gonna be here faster than you know it. I have the CDP designation that's gonna be earned, the CIAS, which is Certified Investor Agent Specialist, the Care Advisor, which is a probate uh, a certification designation, and also another one that I'm acquiring called property pricing specialist. So the one price includes all those, but then take a look at all of the other additional speakers and topics that are going to be featured there. It's four days, folks, four half days of content. And there's a very special price of, uh, right, $7.99 is the price, but I have it for only $5.99 for an early bird. And the early bird includes a package that's worth another $500. I even included a 149 package for those that said, I don't want the designations, but I do want to see the, the, the sessions and all that. So check it out. And my last invitation to you is become an affiliate. Become an affiliate because this way, if you're promoting it and you're sharing it with other agents, you can make 10% every time you do that and they sign up. So take advantage of that for your own enrollment, and then start sharing it with the people in your offices. All right, so that's it. So Heather is here. Heather, how long have we been working together now? About 30 seconds, is, or is, is it uh, three weeks? It's one of those two, what? Uh, you know what? Well, let's see. It is almost <laughs> November. It's almost a month, right? That so, we actually formally launched? It was three weeks ago today. Wow. So three weeks ago today, we announced that we had entered a whole new level, a whole new dimension of support. And that is we now have a formal coaching division. And I gotta tell you, people have asked me over the past two and a half years, Tony, if I get in a situation where I need help and I can call you, I go, uh-uh, no, it's very rare that I can do that. We have 2000 plus members. How can I take phone calls and help you with your deals and all that? It's not scalable, it's not practical. and. I don't have the time, nor do I have the patience to be a coach. It is a special person that can be a coach. I found that special person in Heather. She has owned Blueprint uh, uh, Short Sale Coaching now for several years. She's done a ton of short sales. And we both felt that joining forces was going to be better than continuing on our independent paths. So I said, hey, listen, become my VP of coaching and then we got a couple other things we're going to uh, task her with. But we we launched three weeks ago, Heather. And how's it going? Because you and I talk like maybe every couple of days and I see the enrollments coming through. But what's been your experience so far in your communications with CDPEs? So it's been great. 
great. I've had a blast. And so really what we're trying to do is like, I want to get to know the CDPEs or anyone outside of uh, the network. And so we jump on a call and then I jump on a Zoom one-on-one -on -one with them and go over everything. I think they appreciate it that I'm actually doing this. I think that's important. But we've had mm, a lot of people join us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine like 10 people so far. Wow. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I absolutely love short sales and I, and I love training and I've seen it all. And so I really bring a lot to the table. And I think the people, I don't know if there's anyone on here that's in the program right now. I'm trying to look around, yeah. but it's very organized. If you like organized or maybe you're not organized, then I will certainly help you get there. Yeah, and I think it's really important important that we kind of flesh out what it is that you do because there may be some confusion. So it starts with the CDPE, right? And and you can't get on Heather's program if you're not a CDPE. The CDPE is what gets you in the game and gets you the content, dialogue, knowledge to get out there and feel confident about engaging distressed homeowners. And you know that I've been on a mission now for the past two and a half years to wake people up that foreclosures never went away. In fact, have you noticed how much more media attention foreclosures are getting now? Now it's becoming conversation. Let me tell you something. A lot of the big companies, because they told me a lot of the boards of realtors and everything don't didn't want to mention, and some still don't want to mention the word foreclosure pre-foreclosure and any of their communication with their agents because they're afraid that their agents might get scared. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not down with that, but what could I do? But now they're realizing there's no hiding what's going on in the, in the market right now. We know that we're in for some turbulent waters. We know that there's hardly any inventory out there. We have more agents than we have listings. Agents are dropping out, you know, left and right from associations. And there's this segment of the market called pre-foreclosures. People that don't have a choice but to either work out something with the bank, and most can't, or they have to leave. Our goal is, can we help them exit with dignity? You feel me? And then when agents are waking up to the fact that most agents avoid this like the plague, you need to skate to where the puck is going, folks, not to where the, where the puck is right now. The money is in working in niches, and we represent the distressed property niche. Heather, can you go into more detail about how it is that you take what the CDPE does and you show them how to build a business behind the scenes to it? Well, how much time do we have? Do we have all day? <laughs> well, we have at least an hour and I think everyone's going to hang on your every word. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would love to show a little bit more. So if, am I able to share my screen? Yep, you're a co-host. You're ready to go. Okay. So, um, let me actually just pull it up. So I created two different systems and I'm super organized. So like my three words always for short sales, or I should use the word distressed. Because inside of the program, it's not just short sales. It could be someone that's behind on their mortgage, but oh my gosh, they have an HOA lien or an IRS tax lien. Or we've also helped um, people that don't have a mortgage, but they're behind on their property taxes. It's all crazy. Every situation is different. And so I have created um, a, a, a a tons of modules for you guys. And so I want to show you just briefly what that is. And then I want to show you our actual community and inside of our community. That's why I love Tony is we're both on this mission. We both want to help. We want to help these homeowners exit with dignity, but we're on a mission to help a hundred thousand families. And we can't do that unless all of you are properly supported and helped. And, and that's where I come in. So I'm going to share my screen and just show you briefly our uh, system. And then as I'm going through that, just post your questions. I would love to answer them at the end. All right. So I've created, um, anyone use Kajabi before? Would love to hear if you have. So I love it because it's simple, it's organized. And so I'm not going to go through all these, but there's 18 of them. 
And so really the idea is for all of you to mirror what I have done in my area. I've been very, very successful in the niche of distress sales since 2000, 2007. However, I didn't have this type of support or this community. And so I really wanted to help you guys, okay? So modules one through nine, they have a workbook. It is how I have and continue to run my business. What does Heather do daily? What do I do weekly? What do I do monthly? What do I do yearly? That is all very, very important. You want to get organized and consistent. You want this to be long-term. I've been doing this since 2007 and I'm still getting business because I've done it the right way. And that is what I want to show you guys. But the great thing is, is once you get to module number 10, that is all of my marketing and advertising. So I actually do not put out any pieces unless my team has tested it. And so this is all of them. So um, once you get here, you'll be able to edit all of this. And one of them is a high-end short sales postcard. So I utilize this back, um, it was during the pandemic. I got a $1.5 million deal from it. And I was also able to find the buyer. The bank paid 6%. So I made 6% off of 1.5 million. Now, I don't love to talk about money, but you absolutely can make very good money doing this. That was a, that was a really good payday just off of a 60 cent postcard. So I tell people that because direct mail marketing has always been our number two lead source. And it can be that for you too, but you have to be consistent. So how do you stay consistent? Where do you find the leads? How do you go about that? How do you organize that? All of that is done inside of our program. Um, we also have letters. So I'll talk about our huge letters that we just released this past week, but the auction date letter and the equity letter is what you want to utilize right now. Why are those important? Because a lot of families that have an auction date think there are no options, but there is. There's a lot of methods that we can still use to get that postponed. That letter I have been using. Any, any guesses? Any guesses how, and Debbie, I know you know this, so don't say. Any guesses on how many years I've been using that letter? Someone just take a guess, post in the chat. No guesses? Your whole career, so not quite. So I started in 2007. I've been using that letter for 12 years. Every single week it goes out, okay? So that right there is consistency. With what I do monthly and yearly, it has always been my number two lead source. So you're gonna have access to that. We also have a bankruptcy letter. We also just implemented this past week a training about door knocking and cold calling. It is not necessarily my thing, but if it's yours, we have an awesome trainer inside of the group now that's gonna be doing that once a month. But this is the big thing. This is my number one lead source. And it is my book. I wrote it. And you're going to get access to that as if you wrote it. So my design coordinator creates all of it. I'm just going to show it to you. So this is how I have and continue to build relationships with different attorneys. I use it as a business card. I use it at community events. So obviously you're not gonna be running around with this book with my information. It is gonna be all replaced with yours. And inside of the program, we show you how to utilize this book to go out and build those relationships, where to find the attorneys, how to sponsor the bar association lunches, so it's a really, really great tool. It's a great tool for your homeowners. It's a great tool for attorneys. It is a wonderful tool for community events, okay? And then you just continue to go on. So we talk all about social media. Um, we have whiteboard videos. I don't know if any of you have seen those. We have 16 of those that we have created. It is like, what is judicial sale? What is non-judicial? What is an approval letter? You know, I'm, I'm behind on my FHA mortgage. And so we have 16 of those right now for you. Put them on your YouTube, share them on social media. Social media can be very powerful if you're handling it the right way. And so we have all these high quality graphics for you, all the content you need. Um, I'm going to talk about our live class schedule in a second. But we also have a leads account. So where are we getting these leads? So I'm going to show you where I get my leads. How do I set up a separate list? 
So that way I know my auction date leads are going to utilizing my auction date letter. My pre-foreclosure leads are going to my pre-foreclosure letter. And then what do I do to actually get these homeowners to um, call me? In fact, I just got a call a couple hours ago from one of our auction date letters. And he said, oh my gosh, my auction is today. And I was like, all right, well, can you call the bank? Here's the number. He told me his bank. Um, we have a list of all that for you as well. And he called and their, his auction actually got postponed. And so he's now working with one of my attorneys in hopes that we can sell it down the road. So every case is different. I've seen it all. So I'd be able to help you guys with all of that. Um, this is everything about our letters. So what does my voicemail say? How do I order the letters? I have a printing company that you can get discounts with. Consider adding a QR code. People want to see who you are, that you're a real person, that you care. Um, and then all of our direct mail marketing tips. Like I said, these letters have been our number two lead source. The other great thing is you can get emails from the uh, lead system. Let's set up an email smart campaign. I have already wrote all of these for you. So the auction date campaign runs three months. All the emails are done. All the videos are done. Eventually you can do those videos yourself or if you feel comfortable up front doing it, have at it. The pre-foreclosure one runs about 11 months. So remember the idea is for you to mirror what I've done here. So your community should be seeing you on social media, in the community events, at the attorney's offices, um, in the letters, all of that, okay? Uh, module 15 is all about the book. So how do you get that ordered? How do you create a lead capture form so you can post it all over social media, put it in your email signature? But these are really, really great trainings here. So um, how do I find these attorneys? Inside of our live trainings weekly, which I'll go over in a second, we are helping our members make a list of two specific attorneys how to get all of the information, and, and then how to actually contact them. Okay, so I have a letter that I've used, um, so we do that. And then where do we go about the bar associations, finding them, what sections do they have? It is so, so important to build those relationships because that will be your number one lead source. And then number two, you'll have access to the PowerPoint for this. I do a lot of CLE credits across the country for attorneys, and this is one of them. And so you get to actually hear me speaking to these attorneys on how to add value and revenue to their firm. And so there's a certain type of firm that we want to choose, and we talk about all that, but it is really, really great, powerful training for you guys. Um, I'll talk quickly about the live training class schedule in a second, and then... Module 17 is like, okay, well, Heather, I put all this together and my phone's starting to ring. What happens now? That's where like the true support comes in. And so we encourage you to fill out an intake sheet, try to get as much information as possible from these homeowners, because I want to be able to help you help them come up with a game plan. That's important, right? And so here I've linked every single authorization you need, a generic one. We also have a lender contact sheet. So you are not going to have to go and find these lenders. Um, five pages worth of all of the information. We really want to try to make it easy for you all. Um, so we've done that. We've also collected listing documentation. So inside of here is an indemnity agreement. We encourage you to just change my information to yours. That is going to protect you. There are no guarantees with the short sale, okay? Especially relocation assistance. And then we have the short sale offer packet. So you're not going to have to call the bank and get that. If it's if it needs to be updated, we're updating it on our end inside of our group. We have a no pay stubs form, no bank statements form, no tax returns, a hardship letter sample. So all of it is right there for you. On top of that, I have created a short sale task list, which has been so beneficial to my team. Um, it's really going to help you stay organized. And so you'll be able to click here, go to that post, download the task list, and then here it trains on every single part of that task list, okay? And so that's right there. This is ongoing. So if it gets changed, then we will absolutely um, update all of that. Now let's talk quickly about our live training. So I love to train. And so I am live inside of the group or through Zoom. You can watch through Zoom or the group six times a week. Monday, we have our Mon Monday Mindset, 
our Mindset Monday. So I do that a little bit different. I'm really big on quotes. And so I was very vulnerable a couple of weeks ago. I took a quote. I told, um, I'm starting to slowly tell my story because I think it's very unique and important and it will absolutely help you guys. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 12 Central, um, we do small groups. And so group one is getting started, really taking all of this and setting it up for long-term success. Group two is marketing and advertising. Oh, you have a question about the postcard? You have a question about social media? That is all done right here. Wednesday, we have our Q&A session. And then this is the big class right now. During this class currently, I am helping everyone make that list and how to find the proper firms to target. And then after they make that list, okay, how do we get in touch with them? Here are the different methods. Now let's go and find the bar associations. And so this is a big one because we want you to be able to hit the ground running as soon as 2024 hits. Group four is really staying organized, consistent, and learning to communicate. So, so key to distress sales. So my system at one point allowed me to have 70 short sales going on at one point, 70. And we weren't completely overwhelmed because um, another thing I do inside of the class is really help you learn to automate and delegate. Look, I work eight to three Monday through Friday. I don't work on Sundays. If I take an appointment, it's first thing Saturday morning. I am a mom and I want to be involved in my kids' school and their after uh, school activities. So that's why I absolutely love the distress sales. And then our monthly short sale training is the third Thursday of the month. So the one coming up in November is finalizing your game plan. Let me help you with that to make sure you are ready to go for 2024. But also the one in October, we just released a series letter for pre-foreclosure. So anyone that just got an NOD or Liz pendant should be getting this letter. It's more of a drip campaign. It is showing these homeowners and educating them as to what is going on. So there's that. And then this is our group. And so this is our main source of communication. This is where we go live. Um, this is where people ask questions. Um, I absolutely love everything that's going on in this group. And so if you decide, you know, you can't make one of those live trainings, well, we send out a replay email every Friday, but you can go here to the guide section and you can go back and watch all of the past trainings if you want. Okay. If you want to, after all that, and you're like, oh my gosh, I am overloaded with trainings, but I want more. You can search in our group and we have done a lot in the last couple of years um, we have, you know, how to price a short sale templates for every part of the short sale process, you know, staying organized in 2023, we did, um, IRS tax liens, how to release those, how to review a title commitment, which I think is one of the biggest mistakes agents make. You've got to know what you're dealing with. So I take a dirty title, I take a clean title and I show you how do you release all of that stuff so you can get to the closing table. Um, I've created a flow chart so you know the difference between FHA and conventional and you can educate people on that. Um, value dispute. So tons and tons of information, but this is our main source of communication. Um, and so, yeah, I absolutely love it. That's just like a small tidbit. There's so much involved in here. Um, we can essentially help you with like anything. So I would love to answer any questions that all of you have. Wow, that's a lot. It's like taking a sip of water from a from a fire hose. That's a lot of information. You know, one of the things I think that the agents probably know, but let me just say it anyway. Right now, there's a lot of conversation. You got lawsuits right now against, you know, MLSs. You got lawsuits against NAR. There's questions about what's going to be happening with compensation to buyers, agents going forward and everything else. And one of the things that's kind of amazing about short sales is when you work with the buyer's agent, you're going to get your money. You're going to get your money because it, here's, and let me, let me quantify what that, what, what that means is that the banks in a short sale, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and you know how we're never allowed to talk percentages and everything. I'm, I can mention this because it's right on their website. Fannie and Freddie will tell you, we will pay what is typically customary in com compensation and expenses up to 6%. It's right there. FHA protects your commission. 
VA protects your commission. So I think short sales are going to become even more popular because of that. Just understand, folks, a lot of these deals right now do have equity. And but that's going to start reducing because what's happening is anybody that goes, anybody that purchased in the last couple of years and purchased with very little money down, they're probably going to have very little to no equity in a matter of time. So about 5% of loans right now are short sales. That is going to jump significantly as prices start to go down. We're seeing them go down in many areas, not all, but many areas. And as their missed payments start to build up, and if they took forbearance, that's going to rear its ugly head because they forgot that they have to pay that money back. It's getting hot and heavy, folks. you got to be ready to go ahead and do this. What questions do you have for Heather, for me? Don't be shy. There are no dumb questions. We want to get any situation you're encountering right now and you don't know what to do, that kind of thing. Where do you go to get into this group? Heather, he, uh, uh, Michael wants to know, how do I get in? <laughs> so um, there's a, a small process. So we start usually with a phone call and then we'll move on to a Zoom. But you guys have already seen everything as far as the Zoom goes, but I still would like to meet with you in case you have additional questions. Um, so um, the program for CDP members we have a deal going on right now. And so I think we got a few spots left. I think we started, I think we got like 15 spots left and it's for 2,997. And so that would get you into the actual program, but I would love to an answer any additional questions that you have for you. So I'm going to give you my email and then I'm also going to post my Calendly link if you guys want to schedule a time to meet with me, okay? And just, just, just to also be clear, what we did is we opened up 25 spots at that $29.97 price. And yeah. then after that, it goes up $1,000, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, the reason why is, you know, people have told me before. In fact, there's some people in the program now that have paid other gurus um, a lot of money. And they said that they have learned more in my program in the first hour than they ever did there. And so um, I'm not like the rest of them. And so we have a lot of things behind the scenes that we're working on, Tony and I, and we can't wait. But you would come in and you would have access to all the past stuff you would get access into the Kajabi system and then all of the uh, future stuff as well. Yeah. Put it in perspective. Uh, and just to be clear, the $29.97 covers you for an entire year. So that is an entire 12 months of training and access to all of these resources. The other thing I also want to put out there is I've seen a lot of agents actually pay other agents to help them on their deals because they were clueless significantly more than what you're paying to get this program and everything that's included in it. It is an amazing value. Got a couple of questions on, in the chat area. We've been talking about an easy payment plan, but uh, one option is if you're PayPal, PayPal does have a plan where you could pay over four payments if you qualify. Or six payments is what I heard as well. So they have a payment plan through PayPal. That's something that you can look into. And I don't know, Heather, how close are we to possibly making something available? Would it think is even going to happen this year or maybe beginning of next year? My guess, because I'm really busy with appointments and talking to people, I think we'll probably get through the uh, twenty nine ninety seven, and then it will probably implement it in the in the new year. So it's a you know it's a bigger risk to take on a payment plan, and so there's a lot that we have to do up front to to do that. So right now it is in the works, but I don't know when it's going to be released. My guess is early twenty twenty four. Yeah, and from a business perspective, you know you you have to run a business like a business, or you get run out of business. And if we were to do a payment plan. She's not going to give you one third of the information. She's not going to give you one quarter of the information. You get access to, to everything right up front. And then it becomes the hassle of, well, what if there's some issues 
collecting on the second, third, or fourth payment. So it's not a road that we are, a rabbit hole that we're excited about going down right now. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but anything could change in the future. But for right now, I would look to say like a PayPal or with your credit card, that option there. Thank you, Melissa. So Melissa's a part of the program. And so um, she's been on our trainings and sees how much that we provide. So let me just tell you a quick story. Um, my husband and I started this back in 2007 and we had absolutely nothing. We could not pay our rent. We were running from people um, because we couldn't pay our rent. We actually had to take a train to Michigan so my mom could buy us groceries. Everyone told us we were crazy to leave our jobs and start this niche of short sales but we knew if I didn't have him, I would not be where I'm at today. And that is what I'm trying to provide in this community. But we just kept going. We would do whatever we can to just find the money because we believed in ourselves. And it took us a long time. With this program, it should not take that long. Um, but we were really poor. We had nothing. We were eating like dollar cheeseburgers at McDonald's because we couldn't afford it. And so we just kept plugging away. We were consistent. And here we are all these years later. We just we just moved into our dream home. So I know if we did it, then you absolutely can as well. That, that's beautiful. I think, you know, one of these days I'll share my story as well. It seems like almost everyone that's really, really passionate about helping people in distress went through that process or, or that held themselves. You know, one of the things I also want to point out, we never want to oversell and under deliver. We don't want you to think that coming into this program, you're going to be handed leads. You're going to be handed business. We're giving you the structure. We're giving you the training. We're giving you the systems and everything. But ultimately, it's going to come down to how assertive and aggressive you are in marketing yourself, getting the word out. You know, I'm going to challenge you. And you know what? I think the year is going to end and no one is going to rise to the challenge. I'm a huge proponent of doing a foreclosure prevention workshop. In fact, in the back office, I've given you the PowerPoint and there is an entire replay of me showing you exactly what to say during a foreclosure prevention workshop. I would love to see someone host one. In fact, if you give me enough notice, and I can schedule it, I'll be a guest on your, uh, what do you call it? Because I think you should do it more virtually. Do it by Zoom. Do it in a webinar format. I'll be like on your Zoom to provide that credibility and talk about it from a CDPE perspective and everything else. Let's get out there. If you've done a short sale and you've been successful, if you have a closing coming up, and it's going to happen, right? Record, do a special video interview with you and those sellers. Ask them if they would be willing to share their story because their story will probably motivate others to take action when others see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. On our Facebook group, I'm sorry, our YouTube channel, I have an interview I did a little over two and a half years ago with a lady that my wife and, and I helped her and her husband avoid foreclosure with a short sale. And you'll see how we kind of went back and forth. We talked about their honeymoon period, how everything was okay when they first bought the house. And then what happened? What started going wrong? What did you try to do? You know, what were you feeling? What brought you to the point that you felt like it was time to move on? It's a great video. It's about 33 minutes. You should watch it. Let me see. I have I a question. To Hi, Tony. I have a question Hi. for Heather. Yes. Um, so in the program, like say you, you're, I'm an OG of the CDPE, right? I've been doing a lot of short sales in the past. And what I'm finding now is I don't know if it's mindset or something, but I'm not getting short sales like I used to. So in your program, Heather, is that like for the OGs, like a refresher, like, okay, maybe I'm doing something wrong or, you know, everything has, you know, pivoted, right, for me. And I just feel like I'm, it's it's just weird. I don't know if anybody else is feeling the same way or going through the same thing as I am, but that's how I'm 
in right now. So I don't think you're doing anything wrong, but yeah, there's going to definitely be a, probably some refreshers, Yeah, but a lot of value for you. And so we understand that it's not always short sales. And so I would say half of my business this year, it was equity sales, meaning the homeowner was behind. They contacted me either through my letter or an attorney referral, and we were able to close it out and they made money. That's still going to be around but um, the other 50% was short sales. I think with the way the market was for all of us that were doing distress, yeah, it's been crazy. It's been so up and down. And But the market has, there's something that's got to give. And so I feel like 2024, my attorneys have always said, okay, it's coming in 2024. And so I think you're going to see a little bit of difference. But this is also a community where you can come, you know, there's a lot of highs and a lot of lows. So that's what we're there for you for that as well. Um, yeah, if I could jump in there as well, it's we don't have anywhere near the number of short sales that we're going to have in 2024. And as I say that, more and more showing up. I've, I've been in classes and I've talked to negotiators and say, you know, we got five files just today alone. What happens is with because of the moratoriums, because of COVID and everything else, a lot of these will put on hold for a very long time. Maybe they entered into a forbearance agreement. All of these things are going to start to play out. But I am very, very confident that things are going to get very difficult. I know we've been saying this for a while, and I guess it comes down to the American consumer. The American consumer refuses to stop spending money. But even they are tapped out. You know that there's over $1 trillion in credit card debt right now? And most people are paying between 20 and 26%. That's not sustainable. There's about $19 trillion in consumer debt. You have a high default rate right now on car loans. Like crazy. Banks are really putting themselves out there with a lot of risky loans that they've made on consumer loans. I think it's going to be bad. I think it's going to be very, very bad. And this is the time now to prepare and get out there and start getting in front of people. Remember, just because you make contact, it doesn't mean they list with you immediately. What have I always taught CDPEs? And if you haven't heard it, write it down. Work backwards. Work backwards. Start with people that have a sale date or auction date. Because... Those are the ones that are out of time. Those are the ones that should be out of excuses. And that information is public. When you look up someone that's got a sale date coming up in three days, two weeks, three weeks, you have leverage because they don't have any time. Then the second group, the second category, I call it the B group, are people that are officially in foreclosure. It's now in the system, but they don't have a sale date yet. You know, they have a little bit more time. The final group is the group that nobody knows they exist because they are maybe three or four months behind on their payments and the lender hasn't initiated foreclosure yet. That's where your social media comes in. That's when you got to get out there and market through social media that you are a CDPE, that you have a heart to serve, that anybody that's behind on their payments should reach out to you, and that foreclosure is not the only option. You always close with foreclosure is not the only option. I think you answered Sandy's question, Sandy. I think he kind of answered that. And then the marketing, so um, the letters and all that, there's gonna be certain you know things that you have to add in there for the rules and regulations of your area. And so, um, that will allow you to do that. But the book is just a general overview of how the short sales work. And so that's going to be um, something that you can use no matter where you're at. Maybe you're in Illinois, maybe you're moving to North Carolina, whatever. Um, so all of it, whether you're in a different state, non-judicial or judicial, we do have to tweak a couple things. And that is something that I can help you with. But um, it's it, it doesn't matter where you're at. It's all going to be useful. Yeah. Yeah, short sales are done the same all over the country. What's different in every state is how the foreclosure process plays out, whether the state's judicial or non-judicial. Just to flesh out the answer for, for Sandy, the biggest difference that I can tell you right now between 08 and now is that lenders know what they're doing. 
back in 2008, nobody knew what they were doing, right? Mm -hmm. But the lenders now, they know what they're doing. What scares me is that the listing agent still doesn't know what they're doing. And they're representing a seller that's lost. And there's a buyer's agent that doesn't know what they're doing. And they're representing a buyer that's lost. We have to bridge that. That's what the CDPE does. I would love to answer some more questions. Any other questions? Maybe something specific about the program that you would like to know about? I'd like to take uh, Debbie's, Debbie wrote here, how will this material fit with the CDP advanced material? Well, the advanced material, I think the biggest thing with the advanced is that you have the website. You have the website and everybody should have a dedicated website just for distressed properties. Now, the monthly marketing materials, I think can augment what, you know, uh, Heather is offering now because we offer 12 different items, everything from a press release to a blog post to everything else. So I think it dovetails in very well, but there may be some overlap. Just understand that we've been building our companies independently of each other. And now when you merge, you're going to see that there's some overlap and some redundancy, but that just gives you more options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know if Renee is still on, but she just officially joined. So I got the email. Make sure you join the group, um, but you should have access to Kajabi instantly. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd like to I'd like to share a story about a, uh, one of my agents called me yesterday. She's got a two point three million dollar deal. Now think about this. Oftentimes, people equate distressed properties with low end properties. Oh, that is a huge mistake. You can actually it is easier to close a short sale on a multi-million dollar property than it is on a $200,000, $300,000 home because you have buyers left and right for two and $300,000 homes. You don't have buyers just running around for two and $3 million homes. So think about that. But she has a situation where there's a husband and wife, okay? There is a sale date coming up, all right? They think they have equity. The wife wants to sign. The husband is giving pushback. Well, here's what could have been done better. The listing should never have been taken unless you know both are on the same page. And you know that I always cover that in my uh, module 14. If you have somebody that's acting the fool in that relationship, you got to say, no, 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 no. We're not going there because they all have to be committed to going forward. What good does it do that the wife wants to has signed and the husband hasn't, right? He thinks that he doesn't owe as much as he, as he does. Well, when it's in the docket, that's what you owe. The lender had to produce evidence of what is owed to launch this lawsuit against you. It's what you owe. And then there is the concern that it might be a short sale. And I told her, let me tell you something. You better build into that contract right now that the buyers are aware that there is a pending uh, payoff amount. And the payoff amount may indicate that this property is a short sale and that the buyer would be prepared to continue with the process at that point. Because there's so many agents out there that are clueless folks. You probably come across this all the time, Heather. It's insane. How many times it, have I have I said the following? If you take a listing, if you got a listing coming up right now, you I I I, I know what you're asking the seller. You're saying, how much do you owe? Right? And the seller is going to say this. Uh-huh. And you're going to believe them. Don't. You're going to ask the seller, how many loans do you have? How many mortgages do you have? They're going to say one. Don't believe them. Check title. Like, exactly. That's the biggest mistake. And I do a huge training on that. I just, yeah. I they don't. The that's the thing is, I can't tell you how many agents right now are under the impression that they have a regular listing and they get blindsided to find out it's underwater because they didn't do a lien search and found out that there was a second, a home equity line, a forbearance, a partial claim mortgage. Mm -hmm. include that as part of your routine on every listing you take going forward. 
you're going to see a huge difference in the stress level of your business. Um, one of the questions was, do you, do you, do any agents charge for the short sale? So, um, you should not be charging these sellers anything. In fact, you know, and maybe other people's opinion on this is different, but I was at a brokerage once that charged a listing fee and I asked them to waive that when I was dealing with this particular niche. They would not waive it and I could not physically ask the homeowner for money. So I went in and I paid $10,000 that year for listing fees. I ended up leaving that brokerage because they did not see my niche, okay? But you should not be charging. Um, most banks in a short sale situation are gonna pay you three and a half percent, okay? So just imagine, just close one deal a month at three and a half percent and you should make over six figures. That's just one deal. Our program should allow you to close a lot more than that. So um, I, 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 I'm gonna press you on something because you know, when you say three and a half, are you talking about the total compensation on it or just the one that's going on to one side? Yeah. So I take the listing at 6%. I give two and a half to the buy side. Three and a half comes to me. I take more only because look, there's a lot of work involved in this. Um, however, I don't think it's a lot of work if you have a good system in place. And so, you know, do the banks cut it? So I'm getting ready to close four short sales. And one bank did cut it. So if you got a Celine finance, they're going to cut it to two and a half percent. It is what it is. Your whole goal is to help that homeowner because you never know what business it could lead to down the road. <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah, absolutely. And the reason why, again, this gets really detailed and everything, the six percent is critical because that goes back all the way down to 2009. A lot of you may not even been born back then, but in 2009, we were in the wild, wild west of short sales, right? And there were agents that were putting 10% to the buyer's side in a short sale or 5% or something like that. They didn't know what they were doing. And then what happened is the lenders were cutting the agent's commissions. They were cutting them to the bone, cutting them to the bone. And then you know what happened? Fannie Mae stepped up. Fannie Mae in 2009 stepped up and issued an edict to all of the servicers saying, thou shall pay them their 6%, right there in paper, so long as they don't ask for more than 6%. That's why if you ask for more, they can cut you to the bone. Yeah, and just we'll, we'll find, Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and so Fannie will pay you six, Freddie will pay you six, FHA will pay you, VA will pay you. Now, Heather and I could, dispute because you have to understand something when you have creative people you don't necessarily have to agree on everything i could argue that i would pay the other side an even amount because they are having to work pretty hard to keep that buyer engaged and keep that buyer patient and we may have a shift in the market now guys we're all the perspective we have is it's been a seller's market and you see what some of the compensation amounts are in the MLS right now. It's insane. Just understand something. As more inventory comes in, it will start to shift to a buyer's market. As more listings are out there, you got a short sale and there's all these properties that are non-short sales. Which one do you think the buyer's agents are going to gravitate to? The non-short sales. So if your commission is lower even though it's not necessarily ethical that they're looking at the commission, how many agents are not ethical? So I could argue, you know, that that's completely up to you. Just do the following, please. When it's a short sale, make sure that you have disclosed in the MLS. And that's why the CDPD also has paperwork, Heather has paperwork, that the buyer's agent is aware that ultimately everything must be approved by a third party. And if the commission is cut, they are agreeing to 50-50 if that's the way you have it set up on the net commission. Yeah, there's so there's certain questions that we ask the buyer's agent up front and how like the actual listing, I've been using the same verbiage. You got to protect yourself, okay? And so there's certain verbiage you want to put in that. Like, I've seen it all. I mean, I've had I had sellers tell me, oh, you said you were going to guarantee relocation. No, that's why we have this indemnity agreement because they sign 
we understand relocation assistance isn't guaranteed. So, um, so Ed has a question. Um, so some states use title companies, some states use attorneys. And so there is a way for us to go in and search all of that. Um, but there's also, you want to ask these certain questions to the sellers up front. And then you also want to do your own due diligence because, you know, if you look on say like the recorder of deeds and it's like, okay, it looks like there's like 20 liens, then you may need to pass. Um, really just depends on what it is. What is the average turnaround time for current short sales? So I would say, um, Sandy, it's going to be, I always say average is three to six. It really just depends. Fannie Mae is a great system. You could probably get it done in like two months. But if you have an FHA and they have not gone through the waterfall process, then it's probably going to be closer to six months, maybe more. Um, the ones that I'm getting ready to close, I took on all of those over the summer and I'll be closing all four in November. But remember that, you know, you do have to continue to build your pipeline. Mm -hmm. If you do that, then you're going to have closings every single month, um, which is going to be great. So you'll have closings every single month, but you just have to continue to be consistent. And that is the big thing is how do you stay consistent with this business, organized and also communicate. Mm -hmm. Debbie. Okay, waterfall process, FHA still believes that the buyer, or I'm sorry, the borrower should be given every opportunity to stay in their home. So essentially the waterfall process is, can you qualify for a modification? So they first have to be denied a modification and then it progresses to the point where there's nothing we can do for you to stay in the home. Now, what do you want to do? You know, list it for sale? Yes. So that's the thing is people will jump through that and then FHA says, no, 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 we got to go through the waterfall process first. So you need a little bit more time. You always take a short sale listing for one year, whether you have one year or not, you take it for one year. And then the battle you fight in between there is getting extensions if necessary for you to stay in the game. And all those st strategies are covered in the course and everything else. But we know that people like if that gentleman you know, like I was surprised actually that in your situation, Heather, you said call the the bank and that the bank actually responded quickly enough to stop a foreclosure the next day. I've yet to see that. That's why so many people, when they're faced with that, their only option is to file bankruptcy because bankruptcy will stop everything cold. So that was amazing that he was able to get through to his bank and they actually were able to change the date that quickly well i don't think it was that so um i said hey what is your bank and he said it was sps and i said okay and that's where like i have that five pages of lender contact okay well i don't memorize all the numbers i just looked and i said hey sir please call this number at sps and ask them is my auction today or sometimes it gets miraculously postponed who knows why so that's what happened. He called the bank. He called me back and he was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Just that little bit of help. And um, it was postponed till November 17th. So now he still doesn't have enough time, but he is going to look into the option of bankruptcy. So mm. yeah. Um, credit unions. Yeah. I mean, I don't see a ton of credit union short sales, but that is an option you know, hey, partner with a credit union. And, you know, that's a whole part of our like community events. You want to get out, um, do these community events, partner with the chambers, partner with the libraries. Well, how do you do all that? Um, let's work together as a team to figure all that out. Um, Ed. Yeah, Ed, Ed's an OG. Ed, have you not come back to the family, brother? You got to come back. You know, we've been asking all the OGs to go ahead and come back at the $99 per year that you used to pay and taking the course is optional. It's not mandatory. So no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a CDP still. Okay. All right. Okay. Good, good. But I haven't been marketing yet. So I've been looking at Heather's website and looking at the CDP again um, to, to see how I could get my name out there helping people because, uh, I don't get I don't get people calling me anymore like I did years ago. 
Yeah, you got to promote yourself. What happens is people have short memories, don't they? You yes, know, it's, 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 it's kind of like, you know, you're only as good as your next deal. And, you know, you got to always stay uh, relevant. And this is where uh, the social media part comes in, too. That's really, really critical because there's a lot of people out there in trouble that nobody knows about. Yeah. And uh, that's why and that's why when when you took CDP over, I never stopped using the designation because I had it on all my marketing anyway. Uh, but so when when you came back with it, I I did I did sign up immediately. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate it. But I don't know if I have the money to go into the coaching program. So I may just be doing uh, the CD. PE advanced, which I'm not an advanced member at this time. I was years ago. Uh, so, yeah, and that's perfect. You know, Heather and I, I think both are sensitive to the fact that we know that $3,000 is rounded up. We know that that's not just, you know, play money there. We know it's an investment, you know. So, for some people, they have it, uh, you know, right then and there. Some people may have to build up to it. Uh, you may have to get some leads and find yourself in a situation where you don't know what to do with these leads. And it's much easier to find the 3000 than it is to lose the much more money. If those deals fall apart, we're not going anywhere. I mean, the goal here is to be a resource, an ally to you guys for years to come, God willing for years to come. So there are people that have entered the program. Now there are others that are going to enter a week from now, a month from now. It's, at, when you can, we're there. We're ready for you. Well, I'm I'm back. I'm just trying to figure out how to get how to get back out there. All right. I'm still a real <laughs> estate agent, and uh, but you know I don't market myself like I should. So, but this is this is something that means a lot to me. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you have a heart. Make it personal. Start. So I'm here to help. All right, you. Thank All right you. brother. So I want to welcome Debbie. Debbie's in my area, so I'm really super excited to work with her. I know she's been following a lot of my stuff, so. Yeah, and people will ask, look, like my, my, my job really is the way I look at it. My main role is kind of like the, the rainmaker. You know, I'm the one that's building awareness. I'm the one that's going out there and reaching out to the, you know, the, the the people on, on the boots on the street going into rank and file and saying this is something you need to do this is something you need to do plus the relationship that I'm working on and building with servicers and other companies and everything else because we need to get the army back up to a number we can't service a hundred thousand we can't save a hundred thousand homeowners from foreclosure which is Heather's goal and it's my goal now too we can't do it only two or 3,000 CDPEs. You know, we got to get up to 5,000. We got to get to 10,000 as quickly as possible. Then we'll have that traction. You have a question there from about a teens. Uh, define, define teen. <laughs> so we've this, that's actually probably something we need to talk about, Tony, but like, you know, what we're providing should probably be like way more than what it is. I mean, it's 17 years worth of all of my stuff. And so when you come in, the book is for one person, you know, all of that. So I would say it's one person. And then I don't know, maybe we talk about, uh, I guess we have to talk about that, but essentially it is for one person to come in. Fair enough. All right, we're just over a little over an hour. I think we've, I'm, I'm I'm excited about all the questions that we've taken and given this opportunity, everything else. So if there are no other questions, everybody knows how to get a hold of Heather. Heather, you posted your, did you put your calendar link in there as well? Um. Yes, to schedule. And I know yeah. a couple, Marie and Valerie have scheduled. Um, I'll post it again. Okay. And um, you could also email me as well. Okay. And I'll send this recording out. If it doesn't go out tonight, it'll go out first thing in the morning. Uh, and uh, what I'll do is I will send it out to the entire membership because I think the uh, the information that was shared here is so valuable that the entire membership needs to know about it. So you're going to be busy, even busier, Heather. 
That's fine. All right, everyone. Ready. Heather, thank you so very much. Jeanette, thank you so very much for handling the back end. And most importantly, you guys, thank you so much for being CDPE. Stay safe. Bye.